Yo, what's going on snipers and welcome back to our Chicago Blackhawks franchise mode here in NHL 23. So in last episode we had free agency and we started up the season and so far we're doing a lot better than last year at this stage. We are 14-6-1. Now there is some problems with the team a bit. I would say it's probably like the lack of depth scoring in a sense and also the amount of minuses we have in our lineup that's not on our top six because as you can see our top six line everybody is pretty much point per game on it except for Holton and just under point per game but he is very young still so it makes kind of sense but everybody else on this team is pretty badly minus in terms of being on like the bottom six and also the second line so we are probably going to make some line adjustments to try and get our team to simulate a little bit better defensively and hopefully also the goaltenders could uh, do a little bit better. Comesso has been pretty good so far I'd say but Gustafson even though he's winning games his uh, save percentage is not the best but it, it looks like the both goalies are doing okay I should say not terrible but they look like they're doing decent uh, for the amount of goals this team has allowed so far because like if we look at the plus minus you can see like Vance the rookie is a minus 11 on the second line guys like Brad Lambert are badly minus it could be just because we're a really young team that a lot of these guys are inexperienced at this level but uh, hopefully the team can turn it around in terms of defensive play a little bit going forward at least but anyways, before we get into simulating up until the trade deadline, I do have a couple comments to go over. So the first one is from Pens Gaming 7 He says, being a center does involve being a complete player, but you can make exceptions and hope they grow into it, especially for stars. Look at Austin Matthews, play Vance at center. So he's saying to play Vance at center because currently we are playing Vance as a winger because he's a sniper. He is currently playing on the second line right wing. As you can see so far, he's got 7 goals and 4 assists through 21 games, so 11 points, which isn't too bad. But the minus 11, a little bit iffy, but still not too bad of a start for him. He's shooting only 8.6% at this stage. He's got already 81 shots through 21 games, so I don't know what he's on pace for. I actually should open up a calculator and figure that out, because I'm curious if this guy's like a guy that's going to shoot over 300 shots a season or not, because he might be like a 0 on the, the uh, shoot pass bias. So let me just uh, see what he's on pace for shot-wise because I am curious on that. Um, so 20, 81 shots divided by 21 games played, and we got to times that by 82 to see how much shots he is averaging potentially for the entire season. Yeah, he's a zero on the shot chart, it looks like. He might be like averaging around 315 shots, 316 shots a season if he continues on this pace, which is pretty good. So we might have ourselves a guy that could score a lot of goals if he's going to take that much shots. But yeah, we might end up changing him over to center because basically uh, there's also a comment though from Hawks fan that says that he would put Vance on the second, uh, the first line left wing and he says I always like to put snipers on their one-time sides. I think most snipers do better on their one-time sides in the game and in real life. So what we're probably going to do is since there's 40 games exactly up until the trade deadline, I will play Vance at center on the second line for 20 games and then I'll play him on the second line left wing for 20 games. I don't think I'm going to move him to the top line just because that top line seems to be gelling quite nicely um, so I would like to keep Vance in the spot and I don't want to overuse the guy yet just because he is still young into his career uh, but obviously at some stage he will definitely be on that top line for sure um, so for now though I think Vance is going to sit on here on the second line until he develops a little bit more until he's listed as like the first liner but we are going to try him for 20 games on the left side and also at center and then we're going to do a little bit of a comparison to see how he has improved because like I said he's averaged he has 11 points so far through 21 games we're going to see if he scores more goals on the left side or at center just do a little bit of a test and uh, it should be pretty even of a test considering he's only played 21 games so far which will be one more game than he's playing at left wing and at center and yeah we could just determine which one is the best fit for him and then the last comment is from Rebecca Weiss Woods, which says, I would look to switch up some of your lines and try to fix the minuses. So, yeah, we got to make some line adjustments to try and get the bottom six and stuff like that to be a little bit better defensively. So that is also what we are going to address. So let's uh, address that first. Um, Kershev is only listed as a dev forward, which is kind of concerning, considering I gave him such a long-term deal. But he's not that bad of a player still. Um... Uh, we have like so many young guys that it's like where do I slot everybody in like I would like to move Lucas Reichel up for example and Kubel Eek on a fourth line is kind of a weird spot for him. His R is listed as a depth four but he's been really solid so far on that third line but I might have to move him down just to play more in his role. 
Yeah, I think that's what I'm going to do. Just change that up. Lazar and uh, Kubalik a little bit. Nazar should get growth regardless playing on that fourth line. But we are going to probably have to make a lot of changes this offseason in terms of getting rid of a lot of the veterans. Defensively, we might change up a defensive pairing a little bit. See what we could do here. Um, any right-handed shots on this side? No. Korczynski can play both sides, so we can move Korczynski over to here, and then we may just try Brunstrom on the top for fun. Yeah, we'll just try some random defensive changes a bit. Goaltending will stay the same, and yeah, these guys will still be healthy scratches, even though both all these guys could honestly play in our lineup at this stage. I would send down some of these guys, but some of these guys need to get a chance to play already, so... And, like, they're too good at the AHL level to be uh, just uh, sitting in the AHL pretty much, so... Anyways, that's the line changes we're going to make other than putting Vance to. Let's try him at center to start off with, I think. Actually, no, we'll try him on the left side to start off with because I don't really want to take Pedersen off the face-off that much because so far he's over 50% this season. Like, he is still a very good face-off man in his career so far in his first three years. So, I'd like to keep uh, Vance probably more on the wing but we will try him at center for 20 games as well after the next 20 games are done also i did give uh, pedersen i believe a contract extension at the end of last episode so we'll see if he ends up accepting that because if he does we got him on a pretty good snag like i think it's under six million we offered him in last episode it's been a while since i've recorded an episode so let's advance a few days and see if he accepts that contract extension extension which hopefully he does and yes, he does. Wow, that is a huge steal of a contract this early on to his career. Beautiful. Because, like, look at this contract. I think this is a perfect contract for him. Like, literally, he's uh, making his ELC still. Now he's signed for eight years at 5.35 as a mediumly 20-year-old center that's literally winning a lot of face-offs and could be a future Selkie winner. Easily, I'd say. Because his face-off numbers are all above 53% uh, around... His takeaway numbers are a little bit low, actually, so maybe not. Hmm. Maybe it's because of how bad this team has been, though. Once the team starts getting better, though, he might be a future Selkie candidate. Who knows? But he is our top-line center of the future because Vance probably won't play at center in his career. I'm feeling like he still might end up being a winger, but it depends on, I guess, who he simulates better with and all that type of thing. So, anyways, let's simulate 20 games with Vance at left wing and see what he does, and then we'll try him at center for a bit as well. So, we want to go... 1, 2, that's 5 games, that's 9 games, that's 12 games. 13 games is till the end of this month, so 7 games into the next month. i got to remember that. So let's see how we do in this month, see if we could continue on our hot start, because we've been a pretty good team so far, for the most part. Like, it's been better than I expected, and we have a lot of good guys in the minors too. Like, I don't know why FNSU is down there in the minors, but we have to play him in the minors. We're definitely going to let him go in the off season, but uh, our AHL team is looking pretty solid as well, I'd say. Edvidson is back as well from injury, which I need to slot him in. I think it was probably, yeah, it was probably where Crudel was, right? Or was it where Vlasic was? It might have been where Vlasic is, because Vlasic's not really painting out. I mean, he is kind of almost like a top six defenseman, but we could even like get like guys like Gavin Hayes into the lineup next season, which will be pretty nice. So we gotta definitely get like go of some people in the off season. But I think that uh, coach that we brought in also kind of helped out this team a bit. But now we're starting to lose a bunch of games, which is kind of weird. But there's a couple wins in a row as well. We got a couple shutouts, which is good to see because that means we're improving a bit defensively. But still a lot of losses this month, but also a couple wins as well. We are 20-12-2. We are still first place in our division, I believe. Yep, tied for first with the Dallas Stars. That's not too bad. Yeah, this team is definitely doing a lot better than last season. Last season, we didn't even hit uh, 10 wins, didn't we? So, I think we only had the like to 9 wins. Okay, so we need to have 7 games into this month. So, that's 1, there's 4, there's 6. So, this would be the last one for him. And then we'll change him over to a center. We'll see how he did as a left winger. And then, yeah, like I said, we'll do a little comparison to see which uh, position he did best at. So... Should be interesting to see which position he plays the best at. Obviously, we want to suit uh, his uh, capabilities as much as possible, considering he is a high elite player. And like I said, I haven't had a high elite player, I'm pretty sure, in a franchise mode in quite a long time. So We lost a couple games that month so far, so we're kind of sliding a little bit, which makes kind of sense for this team. Uh, our top line's under point per game now, so we might need to change that up a little bit, but... 
Basically, we are still in third place in the Central Division, but it's a pretty tight race because we are only four points up on the Coyotes, and they are way down there at seventh place, but we do have four games in hand on them, so at least that helps a little bit, but hopefully the team can kind of start winning some games a bit. Okay, so let's take a look at our player stats for a second just to see the update on our guy in... Vance, who really struggled at left wing. Wow, he's struggling on that second line completely. I might actually have to move him up to the top line to try something. Wow, because that means in the last 20 games he played on the left side, he has three goals only. He also has one assist for four points. And he was also a minus six, I think. Let me write this down. He also had a total of 18 penalty minutes over that span. He also had a lot more shots, it looks like. He had a total of 81 shots before. I don't know what the math is. I'm just going to write 81 to 139 shots. And then his shooting percentage went down as well, not a surprise. And his power play goals are the exact same. So he got no power play goals over that span. And he got one power play point over that span. Yikes. Yeah, we're going to change his line, which he plays on. I think I'm going to try him on the top line. Top line center. And then, even though Byfield's been doing good, we're going to have to move Byfield, I guess, over to the wing and then move Fiala down. Vance is up to an 87, though, so he is growing at least, so that's a good sign. But, uh, yeah, let's try Vance on the top line center spot, move Byfield to the wing instead. And then we will move, yeah, Fiala there. Yeah, we'll just try something like this. I mean, Halton is a sniper as well, though, so I feel like he's not going to score enough if we put him as a there. So we might have to move Halton and down. Yeah, let's try something random. Make it a Halton and Pedersen, Fiala on the second line, Byfield, Vance, and Lambert on the top line. Lambert's a playmaker. So, the playmaker, sniper, and the power forward combination. Maybe that will work. And then defensively, let's change up some stuff again. Because our team is sliding a little bit, so it would be nice to make the playoffs this year. But at the same time, I don't think it's like I mean, if we get another good draft prospect in, it's not the end of the world. So, okay, so now he's playing first line center, so he should do a lot better hypothetically in terms of getting points on this first line spot. I don't know if he's getting first line power play time because maybe we need to give him more power play time. Let's see, or is our power play just really bad? He is on the first line power play, but he's playing the point. Let me try playing him on the left side. And then I'm also going to go to edit strategies for a second. And I'm gonna make uh I'm gonna make Vance the finisher on the power play. Because he's got that shot, he's gotta use it. Why is this glitching out? Okay, there he goes. So the distributor I don't know why it's still seeing Fiala there. It's kind of a glitched out thing. We'll do a dis distributor being Nazar, because Nazar is a good passer. And then the puck carrier, I guess, and it doesn't really matter who it is. I'll just go with Fiala for this, I think. Yeah, why not? So we'll try Vance as the shooter kind of guy on the power play. And we'll see if that also helps him in terms of scoring goals. Because even though this kid's in his rookie season, I'd like to see what he's made of. Like, I would like to see him score 30 goals this year. But he is only at a or 10 goals so far. And we are exactly like halfway through the season, so he's probably only going to hit 20 goals this year. But I mean, as long as he's shooting the puck and as long as he's developing, he should end up scoring a lot of goals in the next few seasons at least. So let's do the next 20 games, which should lead up to the day before the deadline, if I'm not mistaken, against the Rangers. So we'll go all the way up to that point, but let's take it a little bit slower just because this team is kind of being a little bit wonky as of late. Like the offense is definitely falling off a little bit, but those new top that new top line should be interesting to see what uh, Vance could do with as much ice time as possible. As Hayes is returned for Rockford, which is good considering he is, I guess, kind of one of our top prospects. Considering he could play on our fourth line almost already, and he's killing it in the AHL. So I think he definitely should be an NHL player as early as next season. The question is, Kubalik is probably gone, I'd say. And yeah, we have to make some decisions about some other players. We got like way too many forwards on this team. Some of them might have to get dealt away for defensemen. Since those line changes, we won a three of our last four games. That's good to see. 
so that's always nice. Let's uh, go to the first against Arizona. And we'll continue to simulate as Sam Girard's been injured with a strained hamstring out till February the 11th. That's a pretty big injury. Let's go replace player. At least it's not too long term, but that's still a pretty big injury to suffer this early into the month as he has returned after missing only three games or two games. So that's not terrible. Uh, let's take out Good Branson. Top pairing, Eric Good Branson. <laughs> that sound, it sounds like something like Columbus would do when they're playing him in real life. I'm curious on Vance's stats, but I want to check that right to the day before the deadline just because I am curious on that. Well, it seems like we're winning a lot more games since putting Vance to the top line. So playing him as the top line center might be the thing we need to do. Because, yeah, we're winning a lot of games since making those changes, so maybe just Vance needed top line time instead of second line time. But who knows, maybe he's still not doing too well. So 32, 19, and 6. Where are we in terms of the standings? We are... Second place in our division, only six points back of the Colorado Avalanche with three games in hand. Not bad. Okay, so we got to do a couple more games. Yep, these three games up to this Rangers game. And then we'll take a look at our player stats and team stats so far. And then we will look ahead at the trade deadline and see what we need to make for trades for next episode and all that type of thing. Okay, so 73 points, not too bad. Obviously, the Avalanche are running away with our division, but we are in a pretty solid spot so far, considering we have games in hand, but it's still definitely a tight race in the Western Conference. Let's take a look at our team stats first, and then we'll take a look at those player stats, because I am curious on Vance especially, and then also some of the other young guys like Pedersen. Um, so, in terms of the entire league-wise, where are we sitting? We are the 10th best team in the NHL at the moment. That's not bad. It's a lot better than where we were last year at this time. Our offense is still not that great, apparently. That's interesting. We're one of the worst offensive teams, like kind of mid-table, a little bit below mid-table. And we are allowing more to more scoring still. So we're a good defensive team, I guess. Right? Or are we just average defensively? Let's see. Yeah, we're kind of average defensively as well. So it's kind of surprising that we're a top 10 team. Like our power play is not even clicking that well either. So maybe that's why guys like Vance and stuff, his offense hasn't been that good. It's because our offensive level hasn't been that good. Our power play is actually kind of mid-table at 16.6, which is kind of a surprise. And our penalty kill has been kind of mid-table as well. So we've been kind of an average team, but we're still in 10th place. So it's kind of surprising because we are tied. Yeah, we're below mid-table on the penalty kill. But we're really good road, uh, really really good road team. 19, 9, and 1, but 14, 11, and 6 on home ice. 6, 3, and 1 in our last 10 games. I don't know why this team's winning so much, though. Like, we're kind of one of those weird teams at the moment. Okay, it looks like Vance definitely started picking up his offense since getting moved up to the top line. And at center, still, he's still actually producing pretty well. So I think we have definitely found his spot for the rest of the season. But Byfield's up to 55 points. He's still doing pretty well. Considering last year he only had, how much points was it? 33 points. Uh, but Vance, 32 points in 60 games, 19 goals and 13 assists. He has as much goals as Byfield now. So over the last 20 games, he went from not, uh, 10 goals over to 19, which means 9 goals. He got also, let's see, I got to do the math in my head, 8 assists, I think. So I think he has like literally like 17 points in his last 20 games, if I'm not mistaken. Also, his plus minus improved, so he might be a plus five over that span, which is pretty good. Um, he also, I think, uh, let's see. Yeah, he had 32 penalty minutes beforehand, so he had like 15 pims. So he's still pretty physical, I'd say, this guy for a sniper. And in terms of shots, he went from 139 shots up to 204 shots. So he got a lot of shots on the top line, and his shooting percentage has improved by almost over, just over 2%, which is good as well. He also now has three game-winning goals, which I don't know if he had that before because I didn't keep track of that. Um, but he did add a power play goal, and he also did add four more power play points since becoming that goal scorer on the power play. So not too bad. So let's take a look at those individual stats a little bit more in depth with Vance. See what he's doing good at. His face-off numbers are good too. Wow. He's above 50% on the face-off dot. Interesting. That's kind of surprising. 
to me at least he's got good takeaway numbers as well like this is a really interesting player like the faceoff numbers and the takeaway numbers if that gets really good throughout his career like he this guy could win a selkie as a sniper which would be really really weird but who knows if that's gonna ever happen but still he's developing quite well that shooting category is still nuts and yeah everything else is growing really well too i think i'm just very really excited for when this guy actually hits his full potential like I said, we're definitely going to have to lock him up. Pedersen's got 30 points in 60 games. Loving him still. How's his face-off numbers? His face-off numbers are still over 50%. How's his takeaways? 43. And he's still giving the puck away a bit too much in order to be considered probably for the Selkie. Zari's been decent. Azar's been good for rookie seasons. Reichel's been good, I'd say. I feel like mostly everybody on this team has been good in terms of offense. Fial has been good. Like, the depth scoring is good. Um, Olsen's uh, 13 points on the fourth line is pretty good as well. Holton has been good, um, and he's a plus 16. Logan O'Connor has been good as a depth option, two points in three games. Sam Girard, pretty solid numbers. Obviously, he got injured a little bit. Horchinski has been decent. Yeah, a lot of the youth players are really solid, I should say. And then Camesso has been really, really solid as well. He's got already four shutouts, and Gustafson's already got three. So we already have a combined seven shutouts, yet we're not even close to being the best defensive team in the NHL. That's interesting. One assist from Gustafson, but nothing from Camesso so far. Let me actually take a look at the entire league and stuff like that at this stage as well. Who's leading in goals and all that stuff. Alex Ovechkin, not a surprise to bring Cap behind him. And Debrinkat leading in points, McDavid right behind him, Hughes up there, Dreisaitl, Pavelski. Best defenseman so far, Dougie Hamilton. Best goalie so far, probably Thatcher Demko's going off. Yeah, it's probably Demko by a large margin. Yeah, Demko's got a 9.23 save percentage through 53 games. And he's also got a 2.27 goals against. Jeez. Best rookie so far, any of our guys? No, Francois Wa, who was drafted 5th overall. Not too bad. Vance is up there in rookie points, but he is 12 points back of uh, Wall, so I don't think he's going to catch him unless he has a really good second or se yeah, second half of the season. So there is that for player stats. Let's take a quick look at like the trading block and also the draft class again, I think, just in case. But I think we definitely want to try and make ourselves have a push for the playoffs because this young team could definitely deserve uh, some experience in the postseason if we are to make it so I think like I don't know if we should be making trades to help us contend or we should just keep the team the way it is and see what happens pretty much because I don't think anybody on this team really is movable at this stage definitely there's guys we can move in the AHL but I would hurt us in terms of the uh, cap floor so but if you guys see anybody you want me to trade for to help this young team out even more so let me know because there is probably some players we could bring in if we want to but I feel like we could just probably run with this team that we have and get this team experience, and then we can marinate the young guys from the AHL into the NHL next season, let go of a couple of veteran guys like Athens U is just playing in the AHL right now. So, But right now I think the team is in a good stance. So, uh, Kochikov still would be a good goalie option, but at this moment we don't need another goalie because we are overpaying on Gustafson as our backup, so we actually hit the cap floor, so I don't want to really let him walk. Wow, Zach Wierenski on the block. That's not a bad one if we wanted to get a top two defenseman, but obviously we'd have to give up a lot in order to get somebody like that. But I'm not trying to win a Stanley Cup right now this season, I don't think. My favorite player is on the block, but I don't think we have any place to slot him in, which is unfortunate. Good to see him playing in Dallas, though, because that's actually a team I'd like to see him in. Hmm. A lot of interesting players actually on the block this year. Sonny Milano. Shout out to that hair. <laughs> um, I wonder if he has to permit or if it just stays like that. It's funny. Uh, Drew Doughty is on the block, not bringing in that $11 million contract. Not at this stage. Jeez, Ryan Ellis, your beard. I don't know how you maintain that thing. Hmm, yeah, there is definitely some players. But, I mean, I don't think this team necessarily needs to make trades. Oh, that is weird. Seeing David Krejci in his uh, non-Boston Bruins jersey from when he was playing in the Czech Republic, that's really, really weird. I'm surprised he's still playing in this and he didn't retire this early on. Weird. Kevin Lincoln in. 
What else we got here? Criders on the block as well. Yeah, there's some really solid players out there. Would it make us better and make us have a better chance of winning a Stanley Cup? Potentially, but at the same time, I'd rather just see what this young team could do in the playoffs and give them some experience so next season they could be even better than that. Because obviously the experience as a uh, young team is very important. Just like with my Draft of Glory team, it is important to uh, get the young guys some experience as fast as possible in a sense. Hmm. Yeah, I think that is almost it. Berkeley Catan's on the block. <laughs> wow, for potential players, that's a really solid one. I'm surprised Vancouver's putting him on the block, though. Because I thought that's why they were uh, not drafting uh, that to high elite that we were looking at. But now they put Berkeley Catan on the block, who is killing it in Spokane right now. Yeah, I'm really surprised they didn't uh, sign him yet. Or they didn't uh, at least uh, play him in the AHL yet. But trying to train him away is a little bit weird. I don't understand that, considering like they have Ryan O'Reilly and whatnot. Ovechkin's on the block. Just bring in Alex Ovechkin for his last year of his NHL career. I'm joking. I'm not going to do that. He's going off this year, so that's why his trade value is so high. But, yeah, it would be probably pointless to bring in Alex Ovechkin, considering we already got the f snipers of the future. Patrick Kane's on the block as well. So Patrick Kane is on, I guess, the, the first line with Ovechkin right now in Washington. I gotta take a look at that because that might be a pretty sick line. Especially if Backstrom is not retired yet. Let's take a look at that just for fun. Just for something extra in this episode. Oh wow, yeah. Ovechkin, Kuznetsov, and Kane is where? Is Patrick Kane scratched? Oh, he's injured. Okay. Okay, I was gonna say, what the heck, where is he? But more than likely, he'd be playing on the top line with Kuznetsov and Ovi. Backstrom isn't retired yet, even. That's interesting. Okay, final thing. Let's take a look at the draft class again just to see what our scouts have been up to in terms of the prospect pool. We don't know what this first overall pick is still like, but he is getting currently scouted, so we should know soon. But a lot of just normal elite players. Obviously, Gavin McKenna is a real player. Same with nobody else on this top six, I'm pretty sure. Wait, what was that guy's name? Dalton Day. What a name. Any guys we could pin already for the draft, even though the draft... Well, the draft does matter, but at least it's quite far away. Like, we're going to end up maybe making the playoffs, so we shouldn't even be focusing on this yet. But let's take a look and see. Weakness in character, but probably a low lead, so we're going to pin him in case... Oh, this guy looks interesting. Might be decent. Maybe decent there as well. Huh. Yeah, there might be some old leads in this draft. Might be, and hopefully there is. Final thing, contracts. Let me just take a look at this as well again. Yeah, so Brad Lambert would probably be the one that I would want to give an eight-year extension to if we were going to give an extension because I'm pretty sure I've seen him play in franchise mode up to a top liner, and he honestly produces like insanely good with really good players. So we might want to give him an eight-year deal at just under $2 million, which would be a steal. But like I'm saying, guys like this offseason, like Kubali, Kachuk, Athenasiu, probably Caleb Jones, I'd say a lot of them are going to be into blocking because we got to replace them with younger guys in our AHL team. And then we could sign some other pieces in free agency. So there is that. Goalie's up for Runo, obviously Gustafson is, but we're not going to give him $6 million again, even though he is playing pretty solid as the backup. So anyways, guys, that's going to do it for this episode of our Chicago Blackhawks franchise mode. So in next episode, we will take it to the trade deadline. We might make some trades. We might not. We might just simulate the rest of the season and see how this team performs. But let me get down below, and I'll see you guys next time.